That's as far back as I can go right there, and she's still roaring with air. Hey, what's going on, you tubulous? EXO coming at you here. Just cleaning up the joint a little bit today. Things are still pretty messy out here from our last episode, so definitely go check that out. There's plenty more footage of the big build, some real good stuff. We fabbed up the front of the cage for filling squares and the final panels, plus added cross supports in both directions to stiffen the baffle. You guys had some awesome feedback, and today I wanted to touch base on some of the comments that showed a little concern in one particular area, the outermost welds that attach the tubing to the angle iron. Some people fear it won't be strong enough to support the baffle. Well, that's where there's a little confusion on what exactly is going on here, and it's totally my fault. I waited to the end of a, what, 20 minute video to show you guys the most important part, which is the vertical braces. Yes, so don't worry. It's not being suspended off the floor by this platform, but who knows, maybe it still needs a good explaining. Let's go ahead and show you with a quick demo. This white sheet will represent the baffle. These strips of wood will represent the steel tubing, angle iron, and vertical braces. And we'll demonstrate how this all works between these two ledges. As you can see, she's flopping around like crazy right now. No support to stop the flex, and this can happen even on thick, thick baffles. It's crazy. So what's the most common solution? Perpendicular bracing to help prevent that movement. Most people choose the small space right in between the subs like this just to help evenly distribute the weight as best as possible. You can definitely tell it decreases the overall amount of flex, but there's still spots where the wood spans a decent distance all by itself. And although these areas may not flex as badly or as noticeably as before, the bigger problem just reduces into even smaller vibrations. That's the kicker. A tiny little vibration on the baffle that moves maybe a sixteenth of an inch or heck, even less, it will telegraph through your subs all the way to the opposite end, which is the heaviest part, your motors, and it will exaggerate that vibration. A tiny sixteenth of an inch down here could very well become over a quarter of an inch up here. And come on now, that's straight up flex at that point. And what does that usually mean? Broken screws or even broken subwoofer baskets. So I wanted to incorporate an additional layer of strength against that from the start. Not necessarily to help hold anything up off the floor by itself, just to stiffen up the surface as a whole. That's where the cross supports come into play. They frame out all the vulnerable spots in between, but most importantly, they bridge the gaps between each vertical post creating a similar platform to highway bridges. Nowadays, you mainly just see lots of round columns everywhere with large tapered platforms on top, and they hold up the whole dang road. Exact same thing is going on here. This bad boy could hold me up all day long if it wanted to. Took away every bit of flex on the small chunks from before, and you can't even push it down with your finger anymore. Could even remove the side sections completely and still have enough support to hold all the weight. So that's why these particular joints right here aren't worth responsible for all the work some people may think that they would be sure without vertical supports but heck I would never do that no way and even further there could be a small one or two inch gap here and the layout strength would technically be none the wiser I mean crap not much can happen in a one inch span this beefy. Plus there's a vertical support six inches away and two more on the very same row for every single row. So that's what holds everything up, not the brackets. My bad guys, these are simply stiffening arms. They don't need anything touching on the sides to do their job like we just saw. As long as they form a large enough T across the baffle, it'll still function as intended. To really show that in action, I just shortened the cross supports even more, so now the edges are not even touching the sides. See how it's still nice and strong? No real difference from before either. The verticals do all the work. Sorry if I confused some of you guys earlier. Pre-mounting the platform was honestly just an easier way of extending the arms of each vertical post. Think of how difficult it would have been to do the other way around. So. Better go from the top down than the bottom up, if you ask me. So there's that. Not only are we using more of the traditional style braces, we went overkill and extended those support points with steel arms across the whole baffle, just like it were sitting on multiple little shelves independently. That's why these connections on the side are not only unnecessary, 
they're actually overkill as well. And for those who mentioned that the extra beef from the 45s could have helped brace the shell itself, you gotta remember that the strongest orientation of the baffle is just like it is, sideways. And we just so happen to have that thing located dang near perfectly down the middle. And good luck flexing plywood in that direction. Now that's a brace, baby. In combination with the bracing from the floor wedges and what's left to come, there's very little room to span. It's gonna be a tank, believe me. But I really appreciate all the sincere comments from people looking out. That's really what it's all about. Thanks for being here, guys. Down here at Showtime, let's see if we can scope the sitch on these fans, shall we? Where's the man of the hour? Oh, of course, there he is. Showtime's finest, man. Always working hard, right? Man, trying to. People really seem to like your idea about those spannies, man. I was thinking maybe we could scope uh, what's going on with those today. Let me show you where they're at real quick, because we got a couple that are over here. Fanny Jr. right here, just real quick. There she is. Super small, super There's compact. The small ones. That's what you were mentioning the other day. Yeah, that's not going to work for you, though, Mr. Uh, 1218. <laughs> we need a couple series link big boys out here on the right. This is right here with what you need, basically. I mean, it's got two fans. It's super small and compact, same size as this one. But you have two motors instead of one because obviously you're going to need a whole lot more airflow. Yeah, any bit will help in that side compartment being so thin, man. And these are thin, like what, damn near two inches? Yeah, less than two inches thick. Something you definitely need with a black van. Let's not even go there, man. I seriously feel like I shot myself in the foot picking black from the start, man. What, what was I thinking? Tell you what, take this guy home with you. Try it out, mount it, see how it works. But keep in mind, this is gonna be coming in a four motor. Oh yeah, the big ass fannies. So it's not gonna be any thicker, but it's just gonna be longer. So like on, if you can picture like on the side of your van, this guy's just gonna be longer, not necessarily thicker. So basically you'll just have a whole lot more room for the fans to blow and air. I, I know I should know this, but are we gonna carry those at showtime yeah, here? Yeah, we're gonna be the first one with it. All right, man, let me get a load of these back at home and I'll keep you a low down and see how she goes. Yeah, let me know, we'll work something out. All right, back here at the shop. Let's see if Remy really was onto something. Told you guys we're gonna start sharing more of the equipment that's going in. And man, I would love to rock these suckers. Let's go ahead and take her out of the box and show you guys what she's working with. Packed up real nice with some bonus stickers from Showtime. Check that out. All snazzed up with the acrylic looking mint. That's the extra touch right there, fellas. I'm finally shooting for that fully buttoned up look. And if I did it right, these could look like a whole nother row of amps up here on the wall. It lights up all over the faceplate too, so that would pop out along with it. Even with both motors spinning, it'll still only draw two amps. So technically, I could have like three of these stacked tall, and my overall amperage draw would still be less than just one of my previous style fans. Don't get me wrong, these do great if you got the space, but they're freaking huge, really noisy, and suck a lot of power just wasn't gonna work this time around. In fact, I'd venture to say that the biggest version of this fan, the big fanny, would probably be best here. Instead of dual motors in one housing, it would be blown up to six all in an array, blowing air like crazy. And what more could you ask for in a small area like this? Couple that with the possibility of having AC ported from the front, the amount of circulation would end up being more than enough since there's only eight cubic feet to handle. My old Expedition had way larger side compartments with tons of room, so back then I used these style of fans hidden on the sides. They move a ton of air, but without that mounting surface on the sides anymore, there's no real place to install it here. So in my situation, the sparked fans just make more sense. They solve my spacing problem, give me direct airflow across the amps. Plus I've been watching Ed's videos for like 15 years, both him and Rich top-notch dudes. Definitely looking forward to changing it up with something cool looking like this for the first time. If you'd like to get your hands on one too, or anything car audio related, I'll include the links below with a special discount in the comments. Just click in EXO at the Showtime web store and whatever you buy, you're giving your man here a nice high five for the referral. So thanks for the support guys. It really means a lot, even if you're just browsing for fun. Far 
back as I can go right there, and she's still roaring with air. Well, that should do it, you tubulous. Explained some important parts of the build, checked out the next lineup of cooling fans I'm gonna run, and now I'm feeling even more pumped to continue building the system. But before you guys go, I wanted to save the biggest news for last and finally announce on YouTube that I popped the question to Elise. She and I just had our seven year anniversary and I decided it was the perfect time to ask her to marry me. She's the most beautiful person I've ever met in my life and I couldn't imagine living it without her. We don't know exactly when the date will be, but she's got a ring on her finger. Thank you guys so much for the wonderful comments that you left on our announcement post on Facebook. I was kind of blown away by the amount of love you guys showed us. Thank you so much. So yeah, your man EXO is gonna be a married dude soon. Whew. It still feels a little bit weird to say that, but man, it, it, it's like we're all growing up together right here in front of each other's eyes. What happened to time? Dang, things really don't feel like they change. I feel so young at heart. It's like, it's all just an illusion, time and age. We live and we grow, but we're still kids at heart. That's why I'm never letting this die. I have so much passion for car audio and, and good sound and loud bass, and it's like my whole life, you know what I mean? So thank you guys for living that with me and enjoying it along the way. I really appreciate you checking out the links for Showtime and all these other, other things that really help push us forward, and the build is gonna be just that. That's gonna be what takes us to the next level. So next episode, be on the lookout for some crazy more stuff with the bracing. I'm gonna make that thing even stronger than, than you expect. So I'll catch you guys on the rebound. I'm still kind of reeling from making this announcement on YouTube, but you, I know you guys are so supportive, so I, I, I'm sure you guys will have some great things to say. Elise is a wonderful person, and we're gonna spend the rest of our life together. So until the next video, this is EXO signing out. Thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, and engaging. I'll talk to you on the rebound.